Let's write out a Taylor expansion for the solution u hat of an ODE. The first two terms here are the ones that are picked up by Euler's method. That's first order accurate. If we want a higher order of accuracy, we have to do something to pick up the next term, which has u hat double prime in it. Now u hat double prime is the time derivative of u hat prime, which itself is just f by virtue of u hat solving the ODE. Now f depends directly on two things, t and u, so we have to use the multidimensional chain rule to write out the total derivative of f. Using subscripts for the partial derivatives of f, we can also put in the fact again that du dt is equal to f when we evaluate at u equal to u hat. Armed with this information, we go back to the first expansion line and rewrite it in the form of the truncation error definition. In practice, there's no way we want to actually derive and code those partial derivatives of the function f in every problem. We'll be much happier if we find a way to approximate them instead. As long as we get the second order accuracy overall, we'll still be ahead of Euler. We accomplish this by writing out the start of a two-variable Taylor series for f. We only need the first partial derivatives, so we lump together all the higher order stuff. Comparing this now to the expression we got for the truncation error in terms of f and its partial derivatives, we see that we can match the beginning of this by putting alpha equal to h over 2 and beta equal to h over 2 times f. So now we use the stuff on the left hand side of the alpha beta equation in place of the expression we had before. I'm writing this out in detail now to clarify that we've got a call to f inside of another call to f because that's how beta is defined. Everything that's not accounted for explicitly because we truncated the series involved is at order h squared and higher. So this will be the basis of a second order accurate initial value problem method. I'll write it out in steps to get something that's neater and clearer than the nested form, but it is the same thing. This method goes by the name Improved Euler, and I abbreviate it as IE2 as a reminder that it's second order accurate. Here again is the IE2 method. Sorry, a little bit got off screen, but it is just a repetition of what I wrote before. Improved Euler is an example of what we call a multi-stage method. Each evaluation of F counts as a stage. Here we have two stages for each time step. We can generalize from IE2 to a method with S stages. Each stage may depend on the ones that came before it and may take place at a different time between TI and TI plus 1.
Once we've computed all the stages, we take a linear combination of them to advance the solution one time step. This type of method is known as a runga kutta method. I apologize to our German-speaking listeners, but this is how Americans usually say it. The template of a runga kutta method is always the same. Each method is completely determined by these constants that appear in the formulas, so the methods are often presented by just showing the constants. That should be CS minus 1, by the way. This presentation is called Arungakutta Tableau. For example, Hoyne's method is given by this two-stage tableau. We can use the tableau to write out the stages by putting the constants into the correct places in the template. This is a second order method. In fact, it's impossible to get higher than second order with just two stages. The most famous Runge-Kutta method, and maybe the most famous method of all IVP methods after Euler, is a four-stage, fourth-order method given by the following tableau. It's not the only fourth-order Runge-Kutta method, but one reason it's so well-known is the presence of these zeros in the tableau that saves some arithmetic when you do the implementation.